Hi there! In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to give a face to any inanimate object you want using only Crazy Talk Animator. First, let's load in our object here, which in this case is going to be an apple. The first step that appears is only necessary if you need to trim or crop your image. In this case, my picture doesn't really need any of this, so I'll continue on. In the next step, you'll need to set the four basic points for your face, for where you want the corners of the eyes and mouth to be. Pretty simple stuff, so once you're done that, just go on to the next step. Here is where you'll spend most of your time rigging your face. You'll need to bring all the white markers to their appropriate places on your character's face. The outer markers are basically to encompass the hair, but since apples don't normally have hair, I can just drag those somewhere out away from the border of the apple, and then proceed to drag those inner markers to the edges of the apple. Once I've established the positions of the basic white markers, I'll move on to the detailed facial mode by selecting the eye on the top menu bar. After I do that, you'll see that even more markers will appear. You can then adjust these markers for better fitting for your final face. Just imagine all the white markers you are arranging as the outline of your apple's future face. I want to make the eyes a bit bigger and cartoony, so I'll expand them to a larger size, and proceed to make the nose a little smaller too. Because I have the mirror option selected on the bottom right there, any adjustment I make will affect both sides of the face. After a bit of touching up on the final detailing, I'm going to show you how you can mask out your background if you need to. Just go to the Mask Background button on the left menu. Because my apple is a transparent PNG file, the background is already masked out in blue. After masking out the background, you can check out the options for the eyes by selecting the eye editor on the left toolbar. When I select that, you can see that a number of options come up with default Crazy Talk eyes. I'm going through the selection of cartoon eyes here to show you the difference. When you've selected one, there are further options you can also adjust as well. Just select the Modify tab at the top right. The first option is where you can adjust the iris of your character. You can use the various sliders at the bottom right to change the color, saturation, brightness, and so on. In the next section, you can adjust the whites of the eyes if you really want to, but then again, who really wants dark eyes? Ditto with the eye reflections. If you really want to change them to black or red, feel free to do so. I'll show you something neat with the eyeshadows though. If I enter in a different value in the Y field, I can move the shadow up or down my character's eyes as you can see here. I think that 20 should be a suitable number, so I'll put that in and move on. I can adjust the eyelashes here by making them larger or smaller, depending on the value I put in. If I put in 100, you can see that my apple will grow some really huge eyelashes. Those are maybe a bit too long, so I'll put it back down to zero for now. Finally, you can also give your character some eye makeup to make it look extra good. I'm going to quickly adjust that for my character to a darker green by using the brightness and hue sliders. Next, I want to test out if my character's eyes look good when they're closed, so I'll test that using the close eye button at the top. You'll see that the eyelids don't totally cover my eyes, so I'm going to adjust that a bit by going back into the face fitting section. I'm just going to drag the lower outer edges of my eyes in a bit so that the eyelids will be able to cover them. Then go back to the eye section and test my results. You'll see that the results will look a lot better now. So next up is the mouth. Once I click on the mouth button, I have a number of different options for teeth. I can select the white human teeth here simply by double clicking them on the right menu. I can also switch them out with the cartoon teeth if I go a little further down the list. For now though, I'll just stick with these nice white teeth. The teeth also have some customized settings. The throat may be the most important. I'll just quickly select that, and what I want to do is turn down the brightness so that it looks a little bit more like the inside of a mouth. Once I've done all that, I can use the calibration button at the top to check all the results for my character. This will cause my head to talk, rotate, move the eyes, and make different facial shapes to test out the overall fit. Once this is done, I'll just select OK. This will bring up another option of whether or not I want to continue on to body fitting. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'll just select No, and my character will appear on the stage. Next, I'll enter into the facial puppeteering panel to check out all the different expressions my character can do. As you can see, his face is morphing to form these expressions because the face is image-based. 
Now I can save my apple as a head or as a character. For this tutorial, I'll save it as a head, which means I'll have to make sure that I'm in the custom tab of the head section first. Once I'm there, I simply need to press the add button at the bottom of the content manager window and fill in a name for my character. Once that's done, I can now import this apple head onto any character I choose. Check out the other tutorials in this series for more on that.